Here we are then for another F1 My Team episode on F122. Today we're here for the Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort. Now then, if you haven't seen the previous episode, the start of a new era, we finally gave up on 110AI. Go check it out. The Belgian Grand Prix link up in the top right. Because simply put, it had to be done. You know, I had to wave the white flag and give up. I couldn't challenge 110AI anymore. So yeah, this race will continue the trend. Or will it? I'm not sure if I'll put that in the title or not, but keep your eyes peeled. Either way, we jump into a Pirelli hot lap and it was the checkpoint challenge. I had an absolutely horrific turn one right at the start and then I got a bit carried away with the drifting. I can't lie, I really enjoyed just drifting these cars around and um, trying to see how much I can kick the tail out as we get to grips with the Aston Martin here. And eventually, it actually ended up costing me too much time between the mistakes and the drifts. We, uh, yeah, just made that gate with a, literally a half a second to spare, but it meant that I had to run deep and sacrifice the exit. So we just got enough points for the silver score when it should have been easy gold but anyway that aside it's not really super important it's not a you know a deal breaker for us nonetheless you can see confirmation there of the 500 acclaim and fifty thousand dollars now we're going to move to the race weekend and Zanville is a circuit which i am dreading because on last year's game the ai was so damn overpowered around here with the high speed cornering glitch and just generally the tire overheating was so bad here that it meant the ai could just drive off now though, this weekend, you can see we have just one upgrade on the car, but we've got so many on the way. Two for the chassis, two for the aero, and a minor and a major in each of those. You can see we're still bottom of the performance chart, but we've got more upgrades as you saw on the way. So yeah, this weekend, we're gonna go with 105 AI, which is what we ran in Spa last time out. The big difference this weekend, for the first time ever, I'm running a setup. I went into the leaderboards and on PC, uh, the fastest person on my friends list was Jack West. And I went ahead and just downloaded this setup. I then dropped the wings a little bit to stay more competitive in the race on the straights. And my God, what a difference. The car feels so planted and there is some oversteer, but it's so sharp on the nose. It's so responsive. We smashed the track acclimatization. I only got green in the tire wear test, which was a bit of a surprise. Um, or fuel management, actually. Sorry, my bad. Uh, nonetheless, though, it's not super important. Um, fuel management seems to be okay for the most part. And then we moved into the race strategy test. And you can see here, 1.1, 1.2 seconds up. And we're flying. The car feels phenomenal. And we're going to cross the line and go P1 on the mediums, fastest of anybody on 105 AI. This kind of, you know, got my eyebrow raising thinking, hmm, maybe we can do 110. We just have to make sure we have a decent setup for every single race. We finished the program getting a purple score and you can see our tire wear was better than projected and also we're about a second a lap quicker in terms of the projected lap time. So. The car was working fantastically well, and you can see by the end of FP1, I quick sim the rest, so there were some you know bugged out lap times, but we finished P13, only seven tenths off P1 on a set of mediums. So definitely a lot of positives to take, and it felt like if I can get a setup on for every single race, we're gonna be super, super quick. So that's one thing I will say to you guys, if you're struggling with the game, or you're struggling with the AI, go into the leaderboards and time troll, and just try a bunch of the setups that you know the fastest guys have done and just see what works for you so we're going to jump into qualifying and we're going to get to work and see if with, with this kind of renewed optimism and on 105 ai we can crack on and have a decent weekend so currently on our first time lap here as we hit the track straight away and you know with the possibility of getting to q2 i feel like we'll see how that goes we make a mistake and we hit the wall quite heavily on the exit of Schreiblack and we get rear wing damage, orange rear wing damage. And it turns out when we went back to the pits after that, we also collected underfloor damage. So we're in for six and a half minutes of repairs, not just for the underbody, but also for the rear wing. Car repairs have set us back a little. 
Now with that time expired, we only had time for one more attempt and this was the lap. So, I've got a fuel for two if necessary, but this ended up being my best lap. DRS open as uh, so we start the lap then. Down to turn one, spot the 50 meter board. You're gonna hit the brakes, down to fourth gear, try to stay nice and tight, short shift to fifth and get the drive. Don't use too much exit curb as the car bottoms out this year. Into turn three, important here to get the car nice and tight now into the hairpin at four. Back on the power as we race up the hill. Preparing Schreiberlack again for the second time as we cross the first sector split. Top left of the screen, we're four tenths up on Alex Albon. This time, no mistake through here, we fly through and now making our way into the next series of right-handers, trying to give it absolutely everything. What a difference this game makes on this track. You know, this year, overheating your tyres is very, very tough to do, and it makes Zandvoort a much more enjoyable experience, not having tyres overheat constantly. Second sector, we're six and a half tenths up on Alex Albon as we make our way into the hairpin. One sector to go, two corners remaining. This is a belt of a lap. Fifth gear down to fourth briefly as we miss the apex a little bit for the penultimate corner and then through the final banked corner. DRS wide open, up to the line we go. What is it gonna be? A one minute 10.9 P5. Wow, a huge lap, probably ahead of expectations. And we finish Q1 in P9 easily into Q2. We finish seven tenths quicker than Jack Aitken in the end and we're easily into the second part of qualifying. So a setup has made a massive difference. We've gone from being seven tenths down to being seven tenths up. You could say approximately 1.5 seconds was the shift in pace. The my team cars and just generally the F122 cars naturally feel understeery. So when you put a setup on that has a lot of oversteer, but it's manageable, you're going to have so much more front end. And that was the case around here. My God, we have found some pace. Now, that begs the question, should I be running 105 if I'm getting out of Q1 with this car? And the answer is no. So in Q2, I went ahead and retired from the session. So we qualify P16. The reason being is because it's not realistic that I get out of Q1. And even if I do, it should be P16 at the absolute very most if I got a perfect session. So we'll keep it fair and we'll retire P16 for us in qualifying out of Q1 for the first time this season. However, for the race, we're going straight back up to 110 AI because we have pace around here. So as you can see, for the race, I changed the settings back to 110 and we're going to send it and see if we can still remain competitive on the maximum difficulty possible on this game. Welcome along then to the North Sea coast and to the Zandvoort circuit. We're 25 miles away from Amsterdam for today's Dutch Grand Prix. It's a race the great Jim Clark won on four occasions, leading for an astonishing total of 370 laps. Zandvoort circuit then, 14 corners, 10 to the right and four to the left, with plenty of steep camber and elevation changes to keep our drivers on their toes throughout the 2.6 mile lap. And watch out for cars making use of the DRS zone into turn one to attempt an overtake. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and a very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, Perez, Valtteri Bottas and Fernando Alonso. Mick Schumacher, Hamilton, they've taken a grid penalty. Magnussen and Lando Norris. Vettel, Russell, Martinez and Verstappen. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Stroll, Albon, Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly. Joe, they've taken a grid penalty. Aitken, Latifi and Yuki Tsunoda. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Right, so qualifying done. And as I mentioned before, we're kind of going to keep it fair. Hence why I retired in Q2. And even with that retirement, we're still starting the race from P13 as other grid penalties have been applied. So 13th place 
we're going to open up the strategy a little bit and take a bit of a risk. The setup feels good. We're back up to 110 AI, so it's going to be a massive challenge, but I want to always try and keep the AI as high as I possibly can at every single race. So strategy for this one is going to be interesting. We're going to go for the hard tire to start with and then move to the medium, possibly the soft. The idea here and the strat really, I'm taking a leaf out of, actually I won't say this, I'll spoil the episode, but I saw someone win a race with this strategy. Um, so we'll go long on the hard tire. It leaves us open to the possibility of benefiting from a safety car or a virtual safety car. So we'll try and make that happen. Fuel wise, I'm going to go for 0.8 of a lap. Uh, that should be fine. And then I've already changed the setup. We've got a bit more tire pressure in there to keep the hards a bit warmer. And we're going to send it and see what happens. So leave a like if you're excited and let's get into the formation lap. Now there is one issue. And even though we're looking pretty decent in terms of grid position, everybody has chosen to start on the soft tire, which it's the first time I remember this happening in the entire season. I've never seen, I think, pretty much everyone elect to start on the softs. So, I'm going to be real. We're probably going to drop backwards quite a long way. So, staying alive is going to be key this race. Um, I'm expecting a very early stop from the AI, which is good because eventually once they pit, it will release us and it will just allow us to crack on with our strategy. But, like I said, we've got that kind of issue where... Yeah, we're going to be um, off the pace quite badly, I think. Anyway, tire temp, not the best, but we'll make it work. And I've just missed my grid slot. Okay, so that's the rest of the grid forming up now. Be patient and watch for those lights. Anyway, let's get to work. Let's do this. Underway, it's a good start. To say we're on the hard tire into the turn one Vettel, Russell, Norris side by side three abreast I have to leave some space Norris slow out of turn one that holds me up quite badly and a bit of contact as we're going to switch to the outside to try and have a look here at Lando let's see I'm running very very high wings so we're not really going to get into a drag race but Stappen sticking his nose in there don't really want to battle Max if I can avoid it, so we'll let him crack on. That's a completely different weight class. And now Stroll up the inside, or Albon actually. Let's see if I can hang on for now. AI battles are going to be key this first in. The more the AI battle amongst themselves, the better for us. But you can already see I'm um, way off the pace compared to everybody else on the soft tire. Here goes Ocon. Side by side, as we head into the chicane hairpin. I want to try and hold on as much as I can. It was different with Max because he's so much faster than me in the Red Bull, but you know, everybody else. I want to try and defend, as long as I can anyway. The snapping pits for damage. Here comes Ocon, we're going to defend the inside. Yeah, forget it, he's got so much straight line speed, my god. We're not competing with that. We'll just fall in behind and try to follow. Yellow flag though. Up ahead. Green flag. Looks like the yellow has gone green, so no more issues. Let's try and stay alive here. Come on, let's go. Lando is a good reference. If I can try and stay close to him, that would be ideal for us. Got a bit loose there. Stroll will have a look. Don't really have a defense. Going to hold the inside and hope for the best. Which we managed to achieve. I was hoping to try and nab DRS off Ocon, but we're just a bit too far back. I'm also using up a lot of battery here, which is not ideal. Then comes Stroll again. I don't really have any ERS to fight this boost. I'm going to just hope he goes to the outside and I can outbreak him. Like so. I feel okay at the minute. The hard tire's working. Obviously, the soft is a lot stronger, but the hard isn't terrible. And uh, once all the AI pit and get out of my way, we can kind of focus on our race. And I think we might be okay. Here comes Stroll again. Going to defend the inside. Trying not to use any battery to try and get some recharge on the go. And we're able to stay ahead for now. Just making our car nice and wide. But I'm also not trying to cost myself time in the process. Ooh. 
Better off at turn one. We'll take that. Lovely stuff. Another place gained. As the AI make a mistake. We will take those all day long. I'm just wondering, you know, when the AI are going to start to struggle in that soft tire. Stroll for now is still keeping up. Although this is the furthest back he's been. We match our personal best on that lap. And this is the first time I've not been under attack into turn one. So maybe this is the turning point. We're at the front of this little train. If we look at the minimap and there's another train just a bit further ahead. Being led by one of the Haas cars. So that could be points for us in a big way. If we go long on this strategy and a safety car reverse here comes out. That could be gold for us. Okay, here we go. Bit of action now. Cars in the pits. We're going to set a personal best here and smash it out of the park. Into the 14.1s. All that AI going for the hard tyre. Of course, we're going to be in the medium later. Possibly the soft, so... Things could flip and reverse, and that could be a massive bonus for us. So let's see how that all shakes out later on. But this is the beauty of this strategy. We can make this hard tyre work and run at a decent pace. We could get some rewards later. Right then, more cars in the pits. Meanwhile, Gasly has put a move on Stroll. Uh, Ga Gasly did get re-overtaken though, so Stroll back ahead, but crucially they've lost time. So, pressure off, we match our personal best. Cars leaving the pits. Carlos signs on cold hard tyres, so that will be an easy pass for us. Although he'll be on the back of us by the end of the lap probably. But we're competitive man, this is working well. Let's keep chipping away. I'm confident in this strategy. Well, we're probably going to let Carlos Sainz go past it. We're not going to put up a fight or use any battery. I might try and nab some DRS on the next lap to gain a bit of pace. Here we go, though. We'll let the Ferrari man just drive by. We'll let him have the outside. A little bit of a lift. And luckily, Sainz behaves. Doesn't miss the apex or anything. and just takes the corner normally. So there we go. Got a bit of battery now in the reserve. 50%. Let's try and stick with Sainz and use a bit of the battery if we need to to... Make it work. We're racing Joe Guan Yu and Latifi. I think Gasly made a mistake or got overtaken. So let's see, man. Let's see what happens. We've just managed to drop Joe Guan Yu out of the RS range and we've managed to actually stay within Scientist DRS. But it looks like uh, Guan Yu Zhou has an incredible straight line speed. This is just eating me up on the straight. So it must have still got DRS somehow. It looks pretty quick in the Alpha. So uh, yeah. Okay, Jack's coming in for his stop now. It won't be easy to keep him at bay. I think he's got a bit more pace, but we'll try and do the best we can. Those mediums are still working for him, it seems. Unless he's already stopped and those tyres are fresh, which might explain why he's so quick. Personal best into the 1 minute 13. It's really good lap from us there. This strategy's working. Checo in the pit lane along with the Lando Norris. And Joe Guan Yu also pits, so let's kind of leave Hamilton behind us now. Still running at that very good pace, very consistent all race long as we move into the top three of course. Still yet to pit, but if there's a safety car or VSC now, we are going to be loving life. Lewis struggling to get by, I'm not making it easy for him, I'm driving flat out and I'm not moving out of the way, however this time I probably will because he's actually close. No point in me fighting this battle, especially now that there's DRS, so off we go Lewis mate. Crack on, I'll try and stay in his DRS as long as I can. The longer we extend the stint, the better. Tire wear at about 40% at the minute on the fronts. They're more worn than the rears, so... Everything's looking good at the minute. The balance is good. These tires are still good. So, the longer we go, I'm considering that soft tire. And a safety car. VSC now, any point now in this window would be perfect. Oh, hang on a minute. Who is that? That's Ricardo, who's behind us. Lovely. Now, could we get a result here? Could we get a safety car or a virtual? He's pulled over on the side of the track. Could this be the move? Looks like we're not going to get one. All good. Well, Crider was catching me, so we can stay a few more laps. Until Perez catches me, we're going to be fine. We can afford to just keep turning the laps, turning our pace. I'm going to box this lap. I'm just going to stick to the strategy. I'm not going to try and risk. The hard tyres were beautiful. And I want the mediums to be the same. I don't want to have any tyre temp issues. Which the softs could give me. So we're going to box. I am probably giving away my leverage. And I could have gone a few more laps. But at this point. I'm kind of sniffing a points finish. On merit. So I'd rather try and chase that if I can. 
So let's uh, get the job done here. Right, P12, comfortably P12. Up to speed now, let's get some heat to those tyres. Cold, medium tyres on the wagon, but once we get the 10 pin, we should be okay. We're going to have the staff behind us shortly for company. We'll try and keep up with them. You know, we've got the mediums on and they're fresh. So if you could be a decent way to drag us forward, I'm expecting battling ahead the Haas cars. It's not over yet. Could potentially get a points finish here. Oh, but that pits. Okay, we'll take that. Lovely. So we'll be left alone. We'll just crack on and see what kind of pace we have. Let's see what the gap is to the Haas cars at the end of the lap. Okay, this is good pace. Cutting the gap down to the Haas boys. We drop into the 12s. 1.1 seconds quicker. This is good pace. Let's see if the medium can hold on every single lap like this. I'm sweating quite a lot. I'm on the limit. I've done three perfect laps. All within a tenth and a half or two tenths of each other. We're going to improve our personal best on this one. Gap coming down to the cars ahead, but not really as much as I hoped for. Reality kind of hitting that you know we're still lacking pace, but this is a, a great improvement with the setup. And we're putting away from the cars behind as well, which is fine by me. So we're guaranteeing P12 at least. And if anything does happen in the last 10 laps, then we're going to be there to pick up the scraps. Oh my god. Caution, the virtual safety car has just been deployed due to build up of debris on the track. Hmm. Will it turn to a full safety car? I'm not sure what the hell happened, but we get a chance to recharge our battery, which is good. Okay, there's loads of debris there in the exit of turn one. Looks like Aiken's front wing, funny enough. Virtual safety car is ending. Maintain your pace until we get the green flags. VSC ending. Wait for the greens. Right, let's go. Okay, clear. Back on the way. Didn't really recharge a lot, but still, no safety car. We keep moving. All good. And Jack is in the pits. Jack is in the pits. And there we go. My prediction was correct. Aiken's had an incident at turn one. Lost his entire front wing. Straight back on the pace with a personal best to the point sixes. Dropping now Stroll and Joe Guan Yu quite a lot. So they're no longer a threat. We lost out in the VSC to the Haas cars, so the gap has gone back up. I'm just relying on some battles, really. They're all just kind of following in a single file, which isn't good. Tire wear's still okay, but if something's going to happen, I'd like it to be now so we have a chance to make something happen. Well, we're out of ERS now. So we're just kind of chilling. Going to try and get some recharge on the go. We're losing literally half a second on the pit straight alone, which isn't even that long to the cars ahead, and then I make it up in the rest of the lap. Yeah, I'm also keeping an eye on viewers. We're slowly dropping down. But yeah, no risk, no threats. P12 is going to be probably where we finish this race. Well, here we are then. Last lap of the race. Excellent performance. No points to show for it, but best performance of the season so far. Even better than Spa, because this was on 110 AI. And it just goes to show what a, set, what a difference a setup can make. We had pace, genuine pace. Very happy. P12 and the clean race. We'll take that. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in part Fermi. doubted whether they could pull off the win here in Zandvoort, but they've done so in spectacular style. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari, do it again.
Job done then in Xanvolt for us. Very successful race, P13 to P12. And even on 110 AI, you know, I think we've done a pretty good job. Retiring for qualifying, I think that was fair. And my decisions were justified. And I think the 110 AI race performance proved it as well. So if we can get a setup for every single track, this could be a turning point for us. I really feel like that could be the, the way to kickstart our season, even though we have the worst car on the grid. So reasons to feel optimistic for the rest of the season for sure and hopefully we'll try and bag some points now before i get a one two big result for the championship leclerc signs hamilton third still keeping the pressure on perez p4 ahead of bottas in a brilliant p5 ahead of lando norris george russell fernando alonso esteban Ocon, mick schumacher running out the points and kevin magnuson just missing out then behind me is going to be stroll joe guanyu latifi sonoda vettel albon and then gasly lap down along with verstappen in his home grand prix having a four stop race disaster Eight can also lap down with that damage and Daniel Ricciardo. Now then, standings. We're still 14th, which is good. Bottas overtakes Alonso. Uh, Ricciardo also drops down. Leclerc still leads by 17 points over Hamilton and Sainz slowly but surely dropping off after being the championship leader for such a long time in the first half of the season. Now though, Constructors. We're still a point ahead of Aston Martin and Alfatari, but we can't get comfortable. We have to try and get a point from somewhere. We've been close the last two races, very, very close, and I think a third time could be the charm. So, yeah, Monza next, I believe. That could be an opportunity for us. Low down, full setup, and just send it and see what happens. Either way, let's get into the upgrades. Right, let's get to it then. So, we have sponsorship renewal with Distort, which I'll happily renew. No issues there on that front. Only a three-day turnaround until the next race, so not a lot of time for upgrades. We're going to go ahead and do some weight training to keep Aiken on the money and nice and sharp. Retirement. Valtteri Bottas is calling it a day. Okay, so the wheels are set in motion and we could be seeing some driver moves in the winter already. That's a very, very surprising one. Bottas ending his career at the end of 2022. Now then, like I mentioned, it's only a three-day turnaround till the next race. So uh, unless we had an upgrade plan for this particular race, I'm not sure it's going to go on on time, but I don't think it is. Looks like the chassis upgrade has failed, so we're going to go ahead and get that on the car. The roll dampers for the tyre wear. Let's get that on. That will take 10 days to arrive, so that will be after Monza. That aside, we have 812 points, and I don't think I can afford anything. We've now got engine upgrades available to us, as you can see, rear fabrication level 1. But they're a bit expensive. Um, elsewhere, durability, a few options. Um, I feel like the control electronics is a decent option, but I'll try and hang back on that for now, as the wear isn't too high on that. Chassis is maxed out, error I think is partly maxed out, so we're not going to rush. We'll hang on to those points and we'll invest them in the big upgrade package. Also, probably because I want to make sure all of these upgrades arrive and don't fail. So, with that in mind, uh, we'll just skip the upgrades for this time and move into the next race. And there we go then. We're ready for Monza now. I'm not going to speak too soon, but today I've seen some hot laps on Twitter, some world record attempts with 0-0 zero, zero wings. Possible meta, possible loophole. I might try and look into it and see if it's an option for Monza as said world records were at, at uh, Spa and Baku. So... Maybe an opportunity for us. Who knows? Either way, guys, leave a like if you enjoyed that one. I'm definitely enjoying the crew now a bit more as we're a bit more competitive. Subscribe for more daily F1 content on my channel. And yeah, guys, I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, take care. And as always, check out the videos on screen. And a massive shout out to the members. And yeah, see you next time, guys. Take care.